Hey, you. Yeah, you. What if I told you I've got a list of essential tips and tricks that are gonna help make you better at doing Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World than anyone else? Well, guess what? It's true, and I'm about to make you the Disney expert in your life. Well, it's been quite a morning, friends. I had plans, real serious plans, for a specific tip that I wanted to give you this morning, which is Rope Drop Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. But guess what? Life had other plans, as life is wont to do. Is that too fancy language? Life is gonna do stuff. I did my best to get here for rope drop so that we could rope drop Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, save the $11 that we would spend on an individual Lightning Lane reservation for the ride because it has such long waits throughout the day, and then spend that money on our Tron individual Lightning Lane reservation because even though that has a virtual queue, the return line for the virtual queue can sometimes be an hour and a half. So I ended up purchasing individual Lightning Lane reservations for both, but let's take it back to the TTC this morning and see some of the stuff that happened that we encountered that made us late for rope drop. We've been here now for two monorail trains. This is the second one to come for this group of people that were loaded onto the loading area. And the first one came and left without loading anybody so we've been here for quite a while it took a, a long time to get through security also so it's a rough day here at the TTC and I just wanted to show you and give you a realistic view of what's going on and why we're not at rope drop right now for Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and this is the sort of thing you can expect to happen on your vacation so I wanted to show it and let you know exactly what's going on in real time. We're just gonna wait a second until people start to board to go down to the last gate, which is number 12. And we go down to the last gate because when we exit at Magic Kingdom, we take a left and there is a magical staircase that is for our use to exit. And we'll be the first in line. And then you take this left and you go down these stairs and we are the first ones off of the monorail. Remember to stay all the way to the right. So when you get in line at the monorail station at the TTC, get in the right hand line and then go all the way down to the end of the platform. It's called gate 12. Here you see it's gate 12 there. I don't think there's a sign. Maybe it's on the gate. But anyway, stay to the right, and then when you get here, take a left down the stairs, and look at this. With how busy it was this morning at security, we are the first ones in line, and look at this gate. Nobody's even going up to it. And we're in. 7 a.m., I booked us Lightning Lane Reservation for Jungle Cruise. Why did I pick Jungle Cruise? Because it is the ride, I think because of the load capacity, not necessarily because of demand, it's the ride that fills up earliest. Wanted to make sure we ride Jungle Cruise, it's an important ride, and that's why we started with that one. Now you're asking, why are we walking to Tomorrowland? And I'm telling you, it's because we're about to go get in line for Space Mountain. Change of plans. Okay, I just checked the My Disney Experience app and Space Mountain is posted at 45 minutes already. We will be using a Lightning Lane reservation for that. You know a ride that we like to prioritize because it's fun and because it's classic is Mad Tea Party. This ride in Disneyland is exposed to the elements. There is no covering on it, which makes it more desirable for some people. They really love, and I have to agree, it does feel great to be completely open air, no roof, but Disney World is in Central Florida and we have something called hurricane season. Okay, cool, it's still posted a five minute wait for Mad Tea Party. Um, and because of the volatile weather here, they knew they had to put a covering on this. Um, as I made the point that I made in uh, one of our Monday videos where we all kind of debate each other, I said, you're literally talking about sitting in a teacup 
and teacups are designed to hold liquid and so hello they're gonna fill up if it's raining in them you want it to be covered this ride of all rides you want to be covered this is 11 oh my gosh we got so lucky this is rumored to be the fastest teacup at mad tea party and do you know what we did just now friends <laughs> i literally talked us all the way in to walking on mad tea party don't fight over number 11 but if you happen to get it accidentally the way that we just did it's really kind of fun because i have to agree it feels faster than any of the other teacups especially if you're doing mad tea party with two people not just one <laughs> Oh my gosh, there's no question this is the fastest. <laughs> I am legitimately dizzy, so be careful when you're exiting, especially if you experience dizziness for any reason on a regular basis. All right, Mad Tea Party posted five minute wait, literal walk on. I mean, we never stopped. I would say that's a successful ride and I think we should go with the flow of these rides that are designed more for children, but we recommend you ride them because they are historically significant. Storybook Circus is kind of a subland located inside of Fantasyland. What was called New Fantasyland, but I think it's been open long enough we can't call it that anymore. <laughs> but Dumbo the Flying, Flying Elephant didn't always used to be in this location and there didn't used to be two of them, but they moved it over here when this land opened and they opened two sides. So twice the fun, posted wait time five minutes. I gotta say, I'm in a really good mood right now and I haven't ridden any thrill rides. Starting with these nostalgic fun, what you might call kids rides, is setting a very, very, very positive tone for me. And in 54 seconds, we have been let in to pick our Dumbo. 54 seconds under a minute. I call that a walk on. This is a cool one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dumbo is awesome. <laughs> Look at this. That was incredible. Posted five minutes, and we were on that ride in 54 seconds. And let's go right next door to the Barnstormer, which is a really fun coaster for kids. And I have to be honest, it's more thrilling than you think. A five minute wait for standby is exactly the length of time you wanna see for the Barnstormer. I would not recommend that you get in a 30 minute line for this ride. At 30 seconds, we've been sorted into our row. It's the last row row eight, which is uh, traditionally known as the most thrilling row of any roller coaster because of the fact that you're getting the whip effect by being in the back. And this is a ride I go bald for, no hats. They tell you to hold on to your loose items and remove your hats. And that's what I'm doing. And here we go, we're riding the first. Well, as we say goodbye to Storybook Circus, probably for the day, I don't think we have any reason to return there unless we need to use the train station for some reason, but we are now back in the land known as New Fantasyland, but I think they dropped the new part because it's been open for so long. And we are coming over here to Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid, to ride a ride that will definitely have much longer wait times for standby throughout the day, but right now is posted five minutes. So we are taking advantage of all of this fantasy land, early morning magic. This is a detail, an imaginary detail I always love. They put blue pearl into the rock work. So when you walk by, it just shines in the sun and looks like magic mermaid magic. Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid is a classic Disney Parks dark ride, even though it wasn't opened until 2012. So it's a newer ride, 
but it is carrying on the tradition of so many incredible rides that we had starting back in Disneyland. These amazing dark rides that tell the story of a Disney princess that we love. Not always a Disney princess either. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride was about a toad and his wild ride. All right, we have conquered everything in New Fantasyland, and now it is time for us to go into the My Disney Experience app and see, because it's only, <laughs> it's not even 10 a.m. yet. We got here 20 minutes late for Rope Drop, 9.20, and we've already gotten Mad Tea Party, Barnstormer, Dumbo the Flying Elephant, and Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid done. We are, we're, it, we're almost moving too fast. I'm, my head's spinning. Um, okay, well, I'll put that uh, issue aside and move on and look at the future and see how many more rides we can walk onto here in Fantasyland. Many adventures of Winnie the Pooh posted as 20. That is pretty good. So we're gonna get in this line, set our timer and see how long it really is. In just five minutes, we've been sorted into row one. Five minutes, not 15 minutes. I think this is a way to do Magic Kingdom. I'm not gonna say the way because everybody has their own way, but I'm learning from this myself and I never would have experienced it if I didn't get stuck first on an intersection with a never ending light and then at security and the monorail line. There goes the car into the book, and look, they disappeared. happening over at Peter Pan, Peter Pan's flight, because that is a ride that throughout the day gets <laughs> probably the second fastest lightning lane reservation to fill up. Um, and people wait such a long time for that ride. So I'm, I am gonna look it up. I was expecting to book that as our next lightning lane reservation as soon as we scan in for Jungle Cruise but we might be writing it now. This might be an interesting day, friends. Um, there's a posted standby way to 40. Let's not do that. And let's walk across the street and see, do my eyes deceive me? Is it a five minute posted wait for It's a Small World? It is indeed. This will definitely get very long lines later. Everyone is going for the thrill rides, I think, at Rope Drop for the first hour. Uh, and they are neglecting the uh, the classics, the Fantasyland, uh, sort of more low key rides, but we're doing the opposite. So actually at 14 minutes, we are boarding um, almost three times the, uh, the original posted wait of five minutes, but it's still very short compared to where it will be later in the day. I think we were really lucky to get in line when we did, but I do wish I walked a little faster because I think we could have gotten here, got boarded even earlier if we were here, just like one or two minutes before. There was a ton of people that showed up all at the same time to ride. And I think it was because everybody saw a five minute wait at It's a Small World, which is really, really, really good. But we're boarded, we're on our way, and we get to ride It's a Small World and we're in the front row. This is awesome. If you've ever wondered where the windows are that look out over It's a Small World from Pinocchio Village Haus, H-A-U-S, house, um, these are the windows. That is the seating. That restaurant's not open yet, that's why they're empty. These are hot seats to get, and once you get them, the food isn't great. Definitely not for plant-based eaters. The pizza is spooky, but, it's a cool place to sit and eat, so maybe it's worth it.
Incredible to think that when we got in line for It's a Small World, the posted wait time was five minutes and now it's up to 30. We only waited 14 minutes, so I think we got out really, really well on this one. And uh, we could have missed it by a couple minutes and had to wait 20 minutes longer or 15. It's a Small World is a ride that Walt Disney created for the 1964-1965 World's Fair in New York. It was actually, if you wanna know the real story, it's a wacky story, but uh, if you know who Joan Crawford is, the famous uh, actress. This is Blanche. Blanche Hudson. About that time in her life, her husband uh, had been the head of Pepsi and he died and she kind of took over his position on, on the board I guess anyway she was somehow still really heavily involved with Pepsi and she decided she wanted a ride for Pepsi to be represented at the 1964 World's Fair and she literally stalked Walt Disney I mean she called him basically she cornered him at a party like she was at a party that he was at and said, why haven't you returned my phone calls? I want you to make my ride. And he was like, easy, easy, Joan. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll make your ride. Wild to think that if Joan Crawford hadn't taken it to kind of an unhinged level, getting a ride for Pepsi, we would never have It's a Small World. Here is the famous spring roll cart where you can get your cheeseburger spring rolls or right now they have the cordon bleu, which is chicken, ham, and cheese. None of which I can eat. Someday I believe in them to create a plant-based spring roll so that I can join in the fun because right now they're very meat and dairy centric. These spitting golden camels were actually in an episode of Full House. They used to be, they were originally on a parade float for an Aladdin parade that was in Hollywood Studios. And in the episode, Bob Saget, rest in peace, got squirted right in the face during the parade by one of the spitting camels. So I always think about him when I walk by those. And here we are at Jungle Cruise. The posted standby wait right now is 50 minutes. We have that Lightning Lane reservation, which is great. We should not wait very long at all. And in seven minutes, we have boarded. That was a great experience. Jungle Cruise, opening day attraction for Disneyland. This is Disney Parks uh, classic, as classic as it could possibly, possibly get. I'm standing here next to Magic Carpets of Aladdin. There's a posted 20 minute wait. I think we should get in line for this and set the timer and see how long it really is. I kind of have a feeling it's less than that, but even 20 minutes isn't terrible for this ride. Um, this is a Dumbo style attraction, so very similar to the ride we rode earlier. Dumbo is the original. Dumbo is the one, if I was going to tell you, you had to ride one of these rides, it's that. But Magic Carpets of Aladdin is fun because there is a golden camel that spits on you if you position your magic carpet just so. I feel like this was a mistake. Uh, something 
to learn from. It's very hot, uh, we're outdoors, there is no air conditioning, there are fans which provide some relief, but it's minimal, and I even enjoy this ride more at night, and I feel like the wait time will just drop to walk-on status later in the evening. Um, I was worried that we wouldn't make it back over here in time, and that's why I used a uh, the geography, <laughs> the distance um, sort of technique in choosing to ride this next as opposed to strategizing um, otherwise, and I wish that I had thought about the other things and written this later, but we are definitely invested and deeply embedded in the line and we are going to ride Magic Carpets of Aladdin and I am going to make sure that we line up with the Golden Camel and get squirted on because I'm hot. Well at 24 minutes we've been sorted for pre-boarding into number three. Already four minutes over the posted wait when we got in line. So, there's that, but we're about to ride. I'm lined up with the camel now. So, something about this is more fun, <laughs> I will say, than Dumbo. Are we gonna get squirted? Oh, maybe he's turned off today. That's the second time we've gone around. One more time we pass him, I am gonna wait and see if we get squirted with water. If we don't, then we'll go all the way up Okay, this is it! Oh my god! I was screaming and it literally shot all the way back. <laughs> camel water! I got camel spit in my throat. <laughs> well, that was an experience. Now you, now you know. Um, that's a daytime experience on Magic Carpets of Aladdin. Um, and I have to say, Aside from the fact that the water was refreshing for a second, um, I wouldn't recommend writing at this time of day. It's uh, now 11.30, uh, 11.40 by the time we actually rode the ride. And I think our time would have been better used even going to watch the Enchanted Tiki Room uh, next door and come back later in the evening when the wait time drops because a lot of families are getting tired, families with small children, and they're going home, and the demand for some of those rides is not as high. Um, I'm hungry now. That took it out of me waiting in that line in the heat, and um, I have a controversial idea for us for lunch, and I will explain exactly what I mean. In the video, I go to Disney World every day, and this is the only way I'll do Magic Kingdom. I showed you some secret dining rooms in Magic Kingdom, and one of them was here. It's sort of between two worlds, between Adventureland and Frontierland. It's called Pecos Bill, and it is a quick service restaurant that recently our friends at Disney Food Blog gave a pretty bad review to. They said that it has gone downhill and I believe them. Um, and certainly it's gone downhill for their meat based dishes. But I have to tell you as a plant based eater, it's really hard to get rice, beans, lettuce, salsa and fajita veggies wrong. And that's what the vegan option is at Pecos Bill. It is literally those ingredients. Um, I think it's really delicious. I think it's filling. I think it's on the healthier side. And I get it a lot. And then I take it and I eat it in the secret dining room. And I feel really good about life. So this is the veggie rice bowl as is. You can see it comes with a side of lettuce and tomato. That's probably because there used to be a really elaborate toppings bar here at Pecos Bill, and uh, that went away during the pandemic be because of health concerns, obviously, and it hasn't uh, returned, which is too bad. I would love to see that return someday, but um, you have that on the side, you have the rice and beans, you've got some kind of 
tortilla chip uh, shreds and those fajita veggies, which uh, look to be green pepper and uh, onion cooked, but not charred. They're just uh, kind of nicely cooked. So the base price for the veggie rice bowl is $10.29. Um, it does come with a side of salsa in this cup. That is included in the price if you ask for it. And then for an additional $2, you can add guacamole. And um, I'm choosing to do that today to make this a little more hearty and to get some good brain food because I'm talking a lot and I'm accessing a lot of facts and I want to make sure that I say everything in a way that makes sense. So adding a little guac and um, that brings it to $12.29 for this quick service entree. It's veggies, it's rice, it's beans. What's not to love? There's a little bit of a crunch from those tortilla strips. And if you don't mind skipping meat and dairy for a meal, or if you're plant-based, this is um, a great, healthy way to fuel your day in Magic Kingdom. Well, another very successful meal at Pecos Bill. <laughs> and uh, it's 12.36. It's time to start heading over back to Tomorrowland to ride Space Mountain. We'll see what time it is when we get there. Remember, we get to scan in five minutes early for our 105 Lightning Lane reservation, which means we can scan in at one. And uh, I don't know. Sometimes we get sidetracked. Sometimes we start talking to other guests. Sometimes we decide to ride the people mover. Anything could happen <laughs> on the way over. We could get stuck uh, in a festival of fantasy parade which I don't think is at noon today. Well, it would be already be over. Anyway, we're headed over there now. We'll see what happens. We may do something before we ride Space Mountain or we may just get there right in time. I am gonna stop in this breezeway briefly to switch out my fuel rods. So I make sure we have plenty of power for the rest of our day because it's a long day. There it is. Like magic. All right, we are getting close to Space Mountain here in Tomorrowland. And uh, we've got about 10 minutes before we can scan in. Um, let's check out People Mover. All right, posted wait 10 to 15 minutes. I say let's write it. We won't get there right at the start of our return window for the Lightning Lane reservation, but we're putting our 10 minutes to good use. And uh, adding a little more time to it. And in eight minutes, we're going up the ramp. One thing about the people mover queue is that the line often looks a lot longer than the wait actually is. So don't be scared if the line is wrapping around a lot. They really get people on this ride quickly. This ramp that we're on right now is uh, efficient. And, you know, they know what they're doing here at the people mover. Well, within our return window for Space Mountain, it's 119. We were called at 105, but of course we have that hour to return. So everything is great. And as soon as we scan in, I am gonna book our next Lightning Lane reservation. I don't know. Is the Lightning Lane side of Space Mountain more smooth. I mean, there are two mirror image tracks. It felt smoother than the other day when I rode the uh, standby side. I'm, tell me I'm wrong, tell me I'm right in the comments. I don't know. What's your opinion on the matter? Space Mountain's fun, okay? It's a blast. It's a roller coaster in the dark. It only goes about 28 miles an hour, but it feels like it goes faster because you don't know where you're going. Okay, I managed 
I managed. <laughs> it's not like I did some amazing thing. I got us a 425 reservation for Haunted Mansion. It's one something now. So that's far from now. We are gonna set a timer and we will be stacking a little bit, um, starting with this Haunted Mansion reservation and then hopefully moving backwards, maybe going even further from there, but it's okay because we're here all night. Oh my gosh, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train posted 100 minutes. Thank goodness we purchased our individual Lightning Lane reservation this morning. And we are about to ride Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Six minutes and we're on. I'm wearing my hat backwards for this one because it's fun, but not that thrilling. Great family coaster. It's a swinging coaster so that the ride vehicle actually swings freely. It is not mechanized um, and it actually makes the corners kind of smoother, turning them, but it also creates this more thrilling feeling because you're moving in ways that you don't usually move on a roller coaster. But then you go through the dark ride elements and they're really beautiful. And all in all, that is a really spectacular coaster and deserves the long wait times that you will see for it here in Magic Kingdom. That being said, yes, I recommend rope dropping it. That would be normally <laughs> the number one tip, but when you experience something like we did this morning, where circumstances being what they were, we were late for rope drop, go ahead and purchase that individual lightning lane. When the park opens, it opened today at 9 a.m. We bought it, it was 20, $21 and I think it was worth it. Great ride that you should absolutely prioritize if you can, if roller coasters are your thing. I'm seeing ominous clouds and uh, blackbirds or crows or some kind of uh, bird group <laughs> um, landing on the castle. Um, in a way that makes me think that uh, storms are brewing. And I think we should go inside and watch PhilharMagic. It's a posted wait time right now of 15 minutes. Um, generally, when it says 15 minutes, it, it means that you are just waiting for the show before us to end and our show to begin. Um, generally, there shouldn't be much of a wait or a crowd of people accumulated. So we will go inside and see if that is the case. Mickey's Philhar Magic is all about that cocoa section to me. I just think it's so beautiful. It's such great, uh, you know, visuals for 3D. And uh, I just love everything about it. All right, we are now at a crossroads. Let's take a look at the My Disney Experience app and see what the wait times are. It's looking like it's fixing to rain, but it's also, I see some blue sky. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, decision made. We're a little more than half an hour away from booking our next Lightning Lane reservation. So there is a 10 minute posted wait right now for Enchanted Tales with Belle. That's great. Um, Enchanted Tales with Belle is a really fun show. It's mostly for kids, but it has some effects in it, including this magical automated Lumiere puppet, and also this magical doorway that, that it's like a portal into storybook, into Belle's magical storybook land. So <laughs> let's check it out. Let's do Enchanted Tales with Belle because it's got a lot going on for adults, not just kids. And only a 10 minute wait, which is great for Enchanted Tales with Belle. It keeps us in this area a little bit longer and we can decide what to do next when it's time to book our next Lightning Lane reservation. I called it an automated Lumiere puppet because the patent, uh, 
was released and it showed how the effect was cr is created. And if you want to keep Disney magic as magic, then don't listen to this. But <laughs> if you're interested in the technology that goes into um, creating these attractions, it's actually, um, there is a mechanical robotic puppeteer that um, manipulates a little Lumiere puppet. Isn't that wild? And that's how it works. So it's not like an animatronic where the yes. robotic parts are inside the character. They're behind Lumiere making him move. This is something one of a kind. You can only do it here. And it's, you know, marketed as a kid's show, but it has some of the most amazing technology used in a theatrical presentation that I've ever seen in my life. Let's go see Hall of Presidents. That's what we're doing. Maybe because it's raining, there won't be much of a line at Sleepy Hollow, which tends to kind of have a long line all day. And we'll be able to order the house-made chips. A side of chips here is only $2.99. Other places, uh, your potato sides like house-made chips or french fries will uh, tend to be like in the $4 range or a little bit more than that. So I think this is a really great value. I always like to stop at Sleepy Hollow and grab a side order of chips here, house-made chips, because I think you really get a lot for your money and they are delicious. And yes, of course, here is my free cup of ice water. Perfectly crisp, not over salted. I love that. No seasoning on them in other parks. You'll get a potato chip that's very seasoned, like a Kusafiri. And that could be way too much for some people, maybe a lot of people. These are plain. They are just sliced potatoes, fried and lightly salted. And they are, to me, perfect. And only $2.99. I mean, you can't, you can't afford not to get them. Here we are in Hall of Presidents. That's Jimmy Carter's fly fishing gear. This is real presidential. Uh, these are these are actual pieces. These are not recreations. This is Theodore Roosevelt's saddle and hat. Amazing. And the time has come for us to enter the theater. And I love that there is a portrait of Walt Disney behind the bust of Mr. Lincoln because Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln in Disneyland was the original and the inspiration, the jumping off point for Hall of Presidents, where we not only get to meet Abraham Lincoln, but every single U.S. president. How amazing is that? way to celebrate our nation, a beautiful way to celebrate Walt Disney who loved this nation just about as much or more than anyone who ever lived. And uh, a dream of a Hall of Presidents that was able to be realized here in Walt Disney World, even though he didn't get to see it, it was his dream that started the ball rolling and it's a really important attraction. It's 4.40, our return window started at 4.25 for Haunted Mansion. We have arrived and it's time to get spooked. It is raining and there is a considerable line, but usually this happens because people get um, hung up trying to scan in, things go wrong. It takes people a long time to scan in, so it should move pretty fast. This is a reminder, you're allowed to scan in five minutes early for your Lightning Lane reservation. There were people that were trying to scan in something like 140 minutes early. It's not gonna happen. Um, don't try the play dumb <laughs> thing and, oh really, it's that far away? Like, you can come maybe late. 
they might let it slide, but do not try to come that early. Five minutes. We get five minutes. That's great. We let us come five minutes early. Disney Parks Dark Ride. The first one was in Disneyland when Magic Kingdom opened in 1971. It opened with this Haunted Mansion, which is a little different. And um, both of them are incredible. And we are about to get the Hatbox Ghost here, which is a whole thing and you should Google because I'm not gonna bore you with all the details. Some people already know about it and I don't want to spend a bunch of time in this video telling that story, but an original effect <laughs> from the Disneyland version when it first opened So very exciting. Look out for that brand new effect will be added to the Haunted Mansion shortly. Now what I'm doing is walking in the direction of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad because we could get a lightning lane. Did I get a lightning lane? No. We could get a lightning lane reservation in about an hour for it. Or we could just walk over there and get in line. Last time I saw the posted wait time was 30 minutes. Uh-oh, the line has stopped outside. That makes me a little worried about it being 30 minutes. It makes me a lot worried. I literally think we walked in here and then behind us, the sign is changing to 50. Ugh. We have two lines splitting off here at the 28 minute mark. This is a tip, this is a trick, stay to the left. This almost without fail works. I'm gonna pick a, uh, another guest who's wearing something recognizable and I am going to watch when we get in line to see if we indeed go faster than them. Even though, even though right now, it's not looking, it's not looking good. Because there was such a long line on the left-hand side, I still think the left moved faster because we are both uh, about to be floated onto the ride at the same time, my sightline and I. But if they are even, <laughs> you should always go left. into sunshine <laughs> so that's a nice development and that is such a great ride um, again if you can ride roller coasters you should definitely make that one a priority because it is classic I was able to book us a 6 15 p.m. lightning lane reservation for Pirates of the Caribbean it was the two hour window uh, since the last Lightning Lane reservation we booked. And now we are going to Peter Pan's flight. We get to go right over here to Fantasyland and uh, ride a very popular, this, this, is the, this is the second ride that fills up fastest, that fills up second fastest after Jungle Cruise, Peter Pan's flight. All right, this is what I have to tell you about Peter Pan's flight. Not everybody is necessarily gonna need to go on this, all right? Very long lines, very competitive lightning lane reservation, very short ride, and it is best probably enjoyed by children. However, adults, Disney adults like myself, find it to be sacrilege to suggest you would attend 
Magic Kingdom and not ride it. So maybe find that child in your heart, the child inside, and uh, hop on board. Or say, nah, not for me. I'll be over at Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. And you know what? I understand that too. And it's now time for us to head back to Adventureland and ride Pirates of the Caribbean, another oh, classic. I mean, this one, I'm gonna say you have to. Young, old, whatever your interests are, be they thrill rides or dark rides or fun carnival style rides like Dumbo, you, have to ride Pirates of the Caribbean. Like the Haunted Mansion, is a classic, a Disney Parks staple, an icon, and uh, we're gonna ride it together. The posted wait time for the standby is 45 minutes, but we have a Lightning Lane reservation, so we're not waiting in that line. Incredible, don't you think? Those amazing practical sets, meaning not projections. Everything was real, and all of those animatronics. It's an embarrassment of riches, I think. Um, it may be lower tech than some of the other stuff that we get now, like Rise of the Resistance. But when you think about the fact that the original was built in Disneyland in the 60s, how did they do that? How are we going to do... <laughs> The, the, we, 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 <laughs> I tried to make that a seamless transition. How are we gonna get across all the way to Tomorrowland? Yes, we're crossing the park again. We're gonna head back to the very end of Adventureland and get to Tomorrowland via Frontierland and Liberty Square. Oh my gosh, we are catching the rarest of the rare a hoedown. This does happen here, and I can't believe Clara Belcow is involved. Wait, what is going on? That was a hoedown. You're not gonna find that on any schedule. That is something that happens spontaneously. Cast members get together with characters and perform a hoedown. And it is fun and it's something you have to literally just stumble upon and that's exactly what we did today. We stumbled upon it and Clarabelle is like the best. The best dancer, the best... <laughs> Disney character, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm exaggerating there, but Clarabelle is um, incredible. And we have a Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin Lightning Lane Reservation. The standby wait is 50 minutes posted, and we're not gonna wait that 50 minutes. We are going to ride right now. This ride is a game, and this game is a ride. You get a laser shooter and you point it at targets in a black light uh, set. And you get points that way and people know special tricks to get lots of points.
bring back Delta Dreams White. Hashtag. Do I have a treat for you? <laughs> uh, the Tomorrowland Speedway posted wait for standby right now is 25 minutes. That's longer than I recommend you wait unless you have a child who is absolutely obsessed and the only time you can ride it is now and it's 25 minutes. Fair. I was able to get us a Lightning Lane reservation for 7.15. It's 7.10 right now, which means it's five minutes early, which means we are allowed to scan in right this second. Oh, you'll never believe it, but Jay, the cast member who loaded me into this vehicle, also has never had his license because he's from New York City. What? What are the odds? I, I yelled across to him, I don't have my license. He goes, I don't either, but we can drive these cars. I was like, are you from New York? He said, yeah. And I said, oh, that's why. Oh, we had a moment. Two grown men without driver's licenses in Central Florida. <laughs> we had a moment. It's 7.30 and our return for Tron is 8.20 and we want to make sure that we don't miss it even though it's an 8.20 to 9.20 return. It's a zero tolerance policy over at Tron. So we are going to go ahead and get in this queue. Let's ride Astro Orbiter. 25 minutes and we are in the pen ready to board an elevator. Lift A tonight. And at the 35 minute mark, we are boarding, but we are about to get unbelievable views of Magic Kingdom at sunset. This is an official tip now. I prefer Astro Orbiter at night, but no time better than sunset. I checked the weather app this morning and it told me that sunset was 8.15. So I booked us an 8.20 individual lightning lane reservation for Tron. This is a tip. This is a recommendation. This is something you should do if you are interested in seeing the lighting effects that are involved in Tron because during the day, you can't see them, there's, there's too much light. They don't have them turned on. And if you use the virtual queue, you have no control over what your return time will be. And that means you probably won't get a time after dark because especially this time of year, the time after dark, this is summer, the time after dark is very short. Uh, before the park closes. So get yourself an individual lightning lane reservation. Spring for it, splurge. I say if you wanna have the full Tron experience, which does include light because it's literally called the light cycle run. It's a major part of, of this ride. Then you're gonna wanna be in control of when you ride it. And the only way you can do that is by purchasing an individual lightning lane reservation and selecting a time after sunset. The other reason you wanna purchase an individual lightning lane reservation for Tron is the fact that once you return, once your boarding group has been called using the virtual queue, which is the free way to ride, a lot of times we have experienced wait times between an hour and 90 minutes. And I'm sorry, I don't have that long to wait. Do you and your precious hours here in Magic Kingdom?
last Tron. I might go so far as to say it's the only Tron. Am I allowed to say that? Because that's how I feel. Tron, is it right for you? Um, do you like roller coasters? Do you like fast roller coasters? In general, do you like going fast? Do you like sitting in the position of riding a motorcycle uh, with a pad pushed against your back and uh, sort of braces around your calves uh, that can feel not really restrictive necessarily, but you're definitely locked in there. I can see people having a problem with this ride if they have aches and pains in their body for whatever reason. Um, I do feel a little worse for wear after riding that. <laughs> and I'll probably feel even worse tomorrow. It's a strange position to put your body in and then be propelled forward at a high speed with that uh, initial launch. Over here to the right is actually a really good viewing spot for the fireworks. Let's take a look at how big the area is. Oh, look at this. Okay, so this tape is the area that people are allowed to stand in to watch the fireworks. You've got a great view of the castle, and so you can see some of the projections there and full view of all of the fireworks. This is a great option. This is not the option that I am going to select for us tonight because I'm, I'm weary. It's been a long day and I actually have a really quirky, fun place to view that hardly anybody knows about. This is a real secret. This is a real tip. This is a real trick. We are going to place a mobile order for some fries at Cosmic Rays and we are gonna watch the castle and the fireworks from there. Over here is castle view seating, and you will be able to sit here and watch the fireworks. spot mid-show because we are going over to Fantasyland to see if a really special secret experience is happening right now. The experience is happening! It's happening! It's happening! Cinderella and all her friends on certain special nights will come out of Cinderella Castle and greet guests and hang out with them out here Watching the fireworks. Let me see if anyone else is out here. This is a great viewing area. Amazing, and I asked a character attendant friend of Cinderella's if her other friends were out tonight, um, other princesses that are in attendance at Cinderella, Cinderella's royal table. And she said that earlier there were. So if you do get here earlier on in the fireworks show, you have a good chance of seeing more princesses. But Cinderella stayed out late, and she stayed until after the end of the fireworks. So we just had two really interesting, exclusive experiences watching the fireworks show. We didn't have to stand in a big crowd. We're not exiting in a big crowd now. I don't feel tense, I don't feel anxious, I don't feel panicked. I feel great, and I feel full, I ate. <laughs> wow, what an eventful day. We got to experience 22 rides and attractions. We got to use six Lightning Lane reservations. Now, Disney uh, says that you should expect to use two to three in a single day. Well, we doubled the highest number in that estimate. So I think that's really, really cool and incredible. We used two individual lightning lanes. Our total for the day, in addition to admission price, I use a uh, 
and it will pass, obviously. But $56 I spent on Genie Plus and two individual Lightning Lane reservations. That's a lot of money. There is absolutely no doubt about it. Did this video help you feel like you're a little bit closer to being the Disney World expert in your life? Let us know in the comments below. I'd really like to know how this video affected you. And go ahead and like and subscribe so we can keep you up to date on the very latest Walt Disney World news. So you can keep being the expert and you can tell all your friends and family about all the cool new things that are happening in Walt Disney World. Now go watch me spill the beans about how my coworkers and I who go to Disney World every single day conquer this park right here, Magic Kingdom. That's right, more tips and tricks. See you next time, bye.